2018, um, I put up an installation as part of my artist in residence here in Caliborough Barracks, where I am presently artist in residence. And we begin here with the uh, ribbons um, that you see on the railings as we enter up into what was formerly the uh, uh, recreational uh, room for some of the army um, cadets. So we follow through here, and this was the room that I was given for my project. So I knew I had the room prior to designing the piece. So the overall title of the piece is Maypole, and as you can see, it basically circumscribes a hundred posters of different women from across age, race, uh, nationality, uh, going way right back to very early times, 1500s, I think, or even earlier, right up into current time. And my selection for the women began quite organically initially in 2017 when I put together a poster uh, collection for International Women's Day here in the Barracks. And then I decided I'd extend it. And that's when I got my sister in Cork on board with me to help me historically research. So but we went outside of the Eurocentric uh, Google machine and search engines and to find women from, you know, not from Europe and from outside America as well, which can be quite difficult to do if you're only relying on, on more standard uh, resources. Uh, so basically, uh, the construct is that you have ribbons leading from each of the women, and they're color-coded, so it's quite visually, I think, playful, but also self-explanatory, so you don't need uh, someone here explaining to you, hopefully, when people come in. The idea is that each ribbon then falls and is connected to a maypole or a maypole type structure here that I built from plaster and hessian and wire and the colour falls down into a card, an index card, which relates to each woman's lives. And this was uh, again researched and put together from various resources, books, texts, online resources, archives, and it's a little potted history of the women's lives or achievements over a certain period, uh, usually from birth to death or if they're still alive. Uh, which was hard enough to edit actually to get succinct and then on the back I decided to put maybe something visual not always but sometimes there's a quote sometimes there might be a piece of uh, certificate maybe to do with their uh, lives maybe uh, an identity card if they were in the war or perhaps a piece of music sheet if they're a musician um, or a quote if they're a poet perhaps or a writer uh, so, um, the colours are important to the piece, both as a visualisation and also as a kind of celebration uh, aspect. And the ribbons, I guess, as well, and the way it's put together, is to encourage people to be very tactile with the piece. That's what I like. Uh, it's robust enough that you can, you know, pull it to this, walk around, uh, and engage with it in your own time. So, whether you choose to go from the poster to card or from card to poster, Depends really on the way that you engage with the piece. Uh, the women in the of themselves, of course, tell their own fascinating story. And during the course of researching, I switched from doing a third person uh, narrative to a first person narrative a couple of months ago. So then I went back to the cards, text, and I rejigged it so that they now speak to us in their own voice, if you like, or in the first person, which I thought made it more personal, personal and kind of engages us a little bit. So, for example, um, let's see if we can get somebody here that isn't too long. So here we have um, Kamaduk Jane Laura, who's on the wall there. She's a gender advisor to the Irish Defence Forces. And actually, I met Jane because she came here for International Women's Day. And she spoke really eloquently about her job and her role, which. Uh, spans both uh, work in Ireland and then overseas because she also then advises the overseas soldiers who go uh, to go on hikes wherever they might be uh, seconded on the different mores and social etiquettes around gender in that country so that they don't make mistakes when they go over there so that they understand 
how to uh, relate to the gender, to the women usually in these places, uh, Muslim women, uh, other religions, so that they get it right, so that they're not putting their foot in it, if you like. So she's a very important role. And then here in Ireland, she also advises, and uh, I suppose she's a mediator for gender, generally, across the Defence Forces. But here in her quote, she says, the Defence Forces believes that gender diversity is not just a moral imperative, it's an operational one that helps us to do our job better. I quite like that uh, quote as well. Um, oh yeah, uh, Marianne Anderson was very interesting as well. She was one of the first uh, black opera singers to sing in the Met in New York. And so much of this intersectionality between racism, if you like, and uh, um, sexism was so apparent as well. So you had, you know, white uh, women being discriminated about against for their gender, but then you had, if you were a colored woman or a woman of color, you had, you know, a double cross, if you like, as well, because you were both a woman and you were black. And some of these were such trailblazers. So in the, in the instance, say, of Mariana, we can go up to her ear, and what she says is a beautiful quote, so there's her, her potted biography at the back. I was a diplomat and a singer, she says, and as a teenager I joined my local church choir, and luckily they, ra they raised enough money to send me to train under a voice coach, and this was life-changing. Within a few years, thanks to a prestigious scholarship, I rehearsed I embarked on a tour through Europe. Much of my life would ultimately be about breaking down barriers for African-American performers. For example, I performed for the Roosevelt's at the White House, the first African-American ever to do so and have this honor. In 1955, I became the first African-American woman to perform as a member of the Metropolitan Opera in New York. And her quote is this, she says, when I sing, I don't want them to use to see that my face is black. I don't want them to see that my face is white. I want them to see my soul, and that is colourless. So, in the in the not their own words, we went and just discovered how how aware they were as well that they were breaking down barriers. So they were living it and doing it in a very organic way because they had to, because they wanted to, and they were passionate about what they were doing. But I think they did realise the importance as well, that they were trailblazers, some of them, very much so. This is Veronica Gill, our own Veronica, who we know lost her life as an investigative journalist, one of the first to do so. But again, her groundbreaking achievement was that afterwards, um, her dog, my dog, death struck a chord with the nation and triggered the largest criminal investigation ever seen in Ireland, and her legacy actually goes on to it lives on today. Her quote would be, I am letting the public know exactly how this society operates. Interesting. Um, so this is May Cole. Um, it's celebrating the lives of 100 women from across time, space, and nationality. Um, and it's a tribute. I like to think that's a tribute piece. Um, and uh, it's amazing. These women are absolutely amazing. 